And you can disagree with Islam all you want, and whether you're an atheist or you're a Christian, and you can. However, I will argue the point that it is the most respected religion on the planet. Nobody openly, or you're a Muslim. And if I had to choose between the two, or if I had to choose which one I'd want my son to be, I'd choose for them to be Islamic. I often say this to people. I say, would you rather your son come home and say he's transgender or say he's a Muslim? Hmm. Because we're getting to that point. Yeah. If Christianity keeps failing, I'd rather Islam. So I love the fact that the son... Hi guys, so welcome back. Thanks for clicking. So Andrew Tate reviews their intention against Muslims. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. I hope you are well. The phrase, money is the root of all evil, is a common saying that has been debated in various ways throughout history. Surprisingly, even after acknowledging this fact, people from all corners of the world, especially from the western part, have now changed this phrase too. Islam is the root cause of all evil. They are of the opinion that for a modern and peaceful world, one needs to be free from all the restrictions. And as Islam is the only religion and apparently is filled with restrictions and boundations, it is therefore viewed as a threat to liberal and free societies. Recently, influencer Andrew Tate appeared in a podcast by famous podcaster Matt Kim, where he discussed and revealed the ideology of the West and why it is so against the values of Islam. He stated that he was very disturbed and concerned about the ongoing unimaginable crisis in Gaza. He explained that this is all because of the weapon industry wants to make money out of lies and manipulation and in reality they don't care about anyone but money. He also said that the big media houses only say and show what is allowed by their owners and thus they cannot be trusted. And I was on Twitter and I was watching all the bombings in Gaza. Mm. I was like, bro, they're literally killing kids. And this isn't about Palestine, Israel, 1947. That Cool, that's a long and detailed argument. They are killing children with bombs. I have a kid that age. Yeah. I see a kid missing her arm, a little girl, the same age as my daughter. Mm. I mean, every single thing they've done. If you look at anything that has resulted in the death of millions of lives, any war, name a war that wasn't built on a lie. Millions of lives lost, millions of lives affected by extension, fathers lost, brothers lost, sons lost. For what? For a lie. And what was the point of the lie? Money. I don't think many people understand truly how evil the agenda is. I wouldn't, if I had a button right here, I have a lot of money, right? If I had a button right here and I could press the button and someone random on earth would die and I'd get money, I wouldn't press it because I'd feel bad because I don't yeah. want the money. But there are people out there who will not just press that button. They'll, 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 they'll sleep on the button for the rest of their lives. Yeah. They'll just sleep on it permanently as arm manufacturers make weapons and destroy random farmers in some random country under the guise of freedom. And they'll make up a lie and they'll just justify it somehow and they'll sleep easy at night. It's truly evil. Additionally, he said that the West has now started blaming Islam for taking over Western countries as they perceive Islam as being the religion of only the Middle East, as if the origin of Christianity was not from the very same region. The reason for this takeover is not only Islam being a powerful and influential religion, but also the weakening and downfall of the values of Christianity. Christianity is now synonymous with atheism, and this is why people in the West are left with only two options, either to follow atheism or to follow Islam. He explained his point by saying that Christianity is now leaving its worship of God and that society is now adopting total freedom, which includes no restriction whatsoever, and a society that is driven by love of only money and profit. He pointed out that being free from all the bounds is actually the phrase and aim of Satanists and Satanism, and therefore we can say that the West is thus influenced by Satanism. They want to get rid of Islam, and Islam is the only religion that does not bend its rules as per the era and it is indeed the last religion on the face of the planet. Christianity has reached a point where it's mocked so openly and yeah. so publicly in Christian nations. That breaks my heart. And I think the attraction of Islam for me personally, and also for a lot of other people now, is there's a lot of people who are just tired of being mocked. Mm. And they want a religion which they respect and other people respect. And you can disagree with Islam all you want, and whether you're an atheist or you're a Christian, and you can disagree with it all you want, and I'm not an Islamic scholar to argue that point. However, I will argue the point that it is the most respected religion on the planet. 
nobody openly mocks it without fear. If they do, they at least make sure they're very careful about hiding their face or hiding behind a police barricade. Mm. Whereas people will mock Christianity openly and think it's a joke. And I feel like it's time for the Christians to take power back by ensuring that their religion is respected. I have some good friends in England who are particularly conservative and they're upset by the changing demographics of the nation. And as a, well, I'm a mixed race American living in Romania who's reverted to mm-hmm. Islam. So I'm a complete mongrel. Yeah. However, I grew up in England and I do understand the innate culture of England and I do understand why they feel threatened by all these outside people coming in. And I do understand how that's negatively affecting the crime rate. And I do agree with them that they want England to be British why shouldn't they? It's yeah. their nation. I completely respect it. And a lot of them are very anti-Islam. And I try and explain to them, I agree with you completely in your points of view. That may be confusing to you of why I can be a Muslim, but I can agree with the fact that you want to preserve the UK. But you're mad at Islam like it's Islam's fault. And it's not. It's a universal law. It's a law of the universe that power vacuums get filled. You can't, as Muslims, turn up to a strongly, truly Christian nation and just conquer the religious landscape if Christianity is being absolutely respected. Perhaps in America it's not so bad, but in Europe, people keep complaining about the spread of Islam. Well, where's Christianity? If you leave a complete power vacuum, what do you expect to happen? Yeah. In America, you just name the certain parts of it which are still Christian. You'll struggle to find very many Christian parts of Europe. Mm. We're here in Romania, which is one of the most Christian countries in the world, and Eastern Europe does have a degree of Christianity left. But in the West, there's no God at all besides Islam. You're either an atheist or you're or you're a Muslim. And if I had to choose between the two, or if I had to choose which one I'd want my son to be, I'd choose for them to be Islamic. I often say this to people. I say, would you rather your son come home and say he's transgender or say he's a Muslim? Hmm. Because we're getting to that point. Yeah. If Christianity keeps failing, you're going to end up with a son that's either going to come home and be a liberal or come home and be a Muslim. Which one would you choose? I'd actually like to ask this to all the conservative Christians in America. And they'll say, Jesus is king. And I'll say, good. I respect that. But let's pretend first a thought experiment that I'm right and that Christianity is little by little like we talked about inch by inch Mm. giving up power and being decimated in real time and at some point in the future you have two choices liberal insanity and transgenderism or Islam which one would you choose and I think most Christians would actually sit if they answered honestly and say I'd rather than worship God I'd rather Islam so it's I love the fact that there's some religious conviction left in America Yeah, but I'm concerned about the fact that One of the primary goals of religion shouldn't only be the salvation of souls. It should be the sanctimoniousness, if that's a word, or the sanctimony of the society it presides over. It should be responsible for preserving the culture. Christianity should be responsible for preserving the culture of the USA. And in certain areas, it seems to be successful, but in many areas, it is failing. Whereas Islam... I feel like it's better at preserving the culture of the nations it subsides over. So if you measure the success of a religion, it's hard to say Islam's not a successful religion. Islamic nations are Islamic Mm. and they feel Islamic. And it's hard to go against the Islamic norms and the Islamic thoughts in Islamic nations. Whereas in Christian nations now, I just feel like they're so publicly attacked. And that truly breaks my heart. My brother's a Christian. Him and I have very long debates about Islam versus Christianity. And we don't do it publicly because I don't want to start a fire because I see Christians as my brothers. We're in the same team. Yeah. But it's kind of, it's kind of, it really breaks my heart. It's upsetting. When I see these gay preachers and the Pope talking about same sex marriage and how important transgenderism, that breaks my heart. And I'm not even Christian. I just think it's so sad that it's happening. Yeah. It's weird when they, um, they embrace ideas that they're supposed to be so avidly against, yeah. right? That really throws a lot of people off. Do you ever consider that? Because if, if we're in a war of good and evil, and that's really the force behind the world, right? There's good and there's evil. Yeah. Do you ever wonder that maybe everyone's worshiping the same God? We just call them different ways. It's super interesting you said that because, yes, I do think, like, especially Christianity and Islam. I've read the Bible and I've read the Quran, mm. and they're so much closer than people realize. People yeah. think that, especially traditional American Christians, as you just named, if you were to get the average Christian from mm. Georgia in the countryside, he will see Islam as this far off Arabic religion. Yeah. It's for Middle Eastern people. Well, so is Christianity. It's from the same place. So they're from the same place. Only 20% of Muslims are Arabic anyway. There's huge Islamic nations, which are Asian, there's mm. Indonesia, Malaysia, mm. there's huge Islamic nations. Why am I so advent in my support for Palestine, which is a liberal ideal, right? So I hold different ideas on both sides of the fence because that's how I view the world. 
some of these guys which instantly sign up with like Daily Wire team. I love Candace. She's amazing and she's mm. true. But some of these other people in the Daily Wire, every single thing is exactly what they were told to say and what they believe. Well, then you have to ask your que- you have to ask a question. Have they just sold their soul to the other side? Mm. Because they've got their sponsorship contract from the Daily Wire and they say what they're supposed to say and they repeat what they're supposed to repeat. Otherwise, they lose their money. And then you start to sit, well, who's behind them? And, and that's where controlled opposition comes from. Controlled opposition is just going to be, I mean, if I had a whole bunch of money and I was sponsoring liberal ideals, the people who were combating those liberal ideals, if I could pay them enough money to only semi-combat the, the non-important ones and allow me to get away with the really important stuff, all for a little bit of money, which I have plenty of and I don't value anyway, well, then I'd do that, wouldn't I? It'd be a fool to think there's not control with opposition in the world. You would be surprised to know that each and every word that Andrew Tate discussed here was absolutely true. The world has now started worshipping money and has taken the desires of its soul and primary objective of its living. Such people do not care about the extreme loss of life in Gaza or any other place for that matter because their only goal is to make money. It is true that the satanic cults use slogans like free from all chains and lure others to join satanism by offering them money and other worldly benefits. Islam is the only religion that states very clearly that money and treasures of this world are only temporary and we need not attach our hearts to them as it will only lead us away from our faith and ruin our akhirah. The West is fearful of Islam because they view it as being too hardline but they do not know that Islam is the only true way of life and the only path that is chosen by our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from the treacheries of this dunya. Ameen. That's oh, so Andrew Tate cleared some misconception about Islam and the Muslims and gave us reasons why Christianity should do better, Christianity should improve. I'm really impressed by his, you know, his message. I am impressed by his words. He spoke a lot of facts. Islam is a very, very respectful religion. It's a very, very good religion. Christianity should do better because there are some things that Islam don't accept. In which Christianity accepts a lot of things. Yeah? Some people are not that devoted. Some people live double life. You know, that kind of thing. Muslims are always focused on one thing. On how to serve Allah. How to worship Allah. And, you know, stick to Allah. And stick to God in everything. And it's because of the situation happening or the event happening in Palestine. That's why he's making this comment. He's talking about why Islam is a very, very, you know, powerful religion that must be respected, that if, if you should choose between being an atheist and Islam, you prefer to choose an Islam. That Christianity to him is not a religion that is really devoted. It's not because he notices that people are not really devoted to God when it comes to Christianity. You know, like when Muslims are so devoted, they follow everything, they make sure they pray five times daily, they make sure they do the, normal, the norms daily. Christians, you know, they, they, sometimes they are misled. They, they just live, they, they forget the purpose of, of them being a Christian. So he's just trying to let us know that, oh, he has Christian friends, he has Christian family, but he will still stick to Islam because Islam, you know, they prove it and you can see for yourself that they, 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 they are focused. They are focused and they serve God diligently. That was a powerful one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.